brought to you by Foxhole Court, the book that continues to be forgotten. No, <laughs> I'm totally kidding. But I have to say, in preparation for this reading vlog, for this first clip of this reading vlog, my edition of The Foxhole Court by Nora Sackovich fell down. And I have to say, if there's one book I keep thinking, my goodness, I need to read this. I need to get back to it. It's Foxhole Court and it just hasn't happened. Hello and welcome to this week's reading vlog. I plan to do multiple check-ins. Therefore, I plan to be extremely concise. So, Today, it is the 10th of February, 2023. It is currently 9.14pm. I attempted to do this earlier today and went on for way too long. So, we're going to keep it very brief. Okay, this, uh, over the course of the next however many days, I plan to read two different books. I am reading two books at the same time. That never happens with me, but I got motivated to. I'll tell you why soon enough. But first, let's talk about the book that was originally on my TBR that I'm currently reading, which is this book, To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. This is book number one in the uh, To All the Boys I've Loved Before trilogy. It is a YA romance. I am currently up to uh, chapter number four, page 21, or actually I think it's more like page 25 because I've read a, a bit into chapter four. But anyway, my thoughts are not really enjoying it so far. Um... I, one thing that I'm finding very much about myself is that I, my enjoyment level of a YA and a middle grade can sometimes be summed up in, uh, whereabouts on the scale of middle grade or YA the book is. If it's on the younger side of that age range, I don't enjoy it as much. And this book seems to be on the younger side of YA, at least so far. There is so much room for growth, but, um, at the moment, we are following Lara Jean, and she just seems incredibly immature to me. I don't know. It's just coming across that way, and if there's one thing I just don't enjoy reading about, it is immaturity. It's just my thing. I don't like it, but I've decided I'm going to give this book until the uh, first quarter mark, so that will be around chapter 18, 19, somewhere around there, and then determine if I want to keep reading or not, but so far, not really loving it, have to be honest. We'll see what happens. I'll update you more on that one tomorrow. The other books I'm, book I'm reading is Mistborn the Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. I am so excited about this. So I picked this up before I started To All the Boys I Loved Before. It was in the earlier hours of this morning where I was thinking about Mistborn. And then I thought, well, what the heck is stopping me from picking it up right now? So I did. And I'm really loving it. <laughs> if you have read Mistborn the Final Empire before, I've just made it to the part where Kelsia uh, has met Vin for the first time, and he is seconds away from asking her to join his crew. That is not a spoiler, because it happens incredibly early on in the book. I am so happy to be back in this book with these characters. This is my favourite book of all time, and oh my gosh, I can tell why <laughs> it is so good. <laughs> all right, I'll be back again tomorrow for another update that will be a little longer than this one. But I just want to open up the reading vlog. So to all the boys I loved before, currently about a two-star read, this little section far in, and Miss Bourne, five-star read. Overwhelming five stars, if not six, will crush through the ceiling. That's how much I'm loving it. All right, I'll see you for more updates tomorrow. It is Saturday, the 11th of uh, February at 6.21pm, uh, to be precise. I have just finished To All the Boys I Loved Before by Jenny Han, and yeah, I kind of want to sit on, uh, sit with my thoughts before I tell you what the rating is. So, um, if you don't have access to the Discord or if for whatever reason you don't want to join, which is totally fine, I'll give you my rating for this book in the monthly wrap. But if you're over on the Discord, um, I'll give you an update there. And obviously I will give the, um, rating that I have for this book on Goodreads, uh, which Goodreads I will, um, update, uh, after recording this. So, um, yeah, Goodreads is probably already updated right now, so you can go check and see, uh, in your time, listening to this, what I rated it. But I'm debating the 23.5 and a 4 stars. So when I checked in yesterday, I was saying that, um, 
I was potentially going to DNF this book. I was giving myself up to a certain point to determine if I was going to do that. But you know what? Things turned around pretty quickly. So in this book, we follow Lara Jean, who has decided to write letters uh, to the five boys that she has ever loved. Her mother, unfortunately, is not with us anymore, but her mother had given her a hat box when she was a little girl and said that she could keep anything she wanted to in this box that was precious to her. So whenever she found herself falling in love with someone, she would write them a letter and instead of posting it, she would place it into the hat box. Uh, not too far into this book, maybe about four or five chapters in, but page count, maybe about 50 pages into the book, so it's not a spoiler at all. Her father, um, uh, well, her father is taking things to a thrift shop that he wants to get rid of, and... Uh, Lara Jean can't find her hat box anymore, and the next thing she knows, she finds out that these letters have been mailed to all the boys that uh, she had written to. So that uh, becomes rather interesting, and things go on from there. Okay, let's put a spoiler tag up on the screen because I just want to say a little bit more that I don't know if some people will consider to be a spoiler or not. This does occur in the first half of the book. So, spoiler tag on the screen. Okay, the spoiler is that uh, the first guy to reveal to her that he has received her letter has a bit of a chat with her, and what they both find out, Lara Jean and uh, this guy who, I'm trying to remember what the heck, his name was? Peter was his name. So Lara Jean and Peter are having a chat and Lara is just telling him, you know, that's how she felt at the time. Peter is the most, well, made out to be the single most attractive guy in the entire school. Um, all the girls want to be with him. All the guys just want to hang around him. And she saw him do some things that she found to be incredibly attractive, that are deeper than his good looks, and she has a chat with him. He has recently broken up with someone who, uh, yeah, he's broken up with a, a girl recently, and Lara Jean likes someone else who also received a letter, um, one of her letters, and so... Peter and Lyra Jean decide to go into a fake pretend relationship uh, to make the two that they are interested in, which for Peter is the girl that um, he has broken up with, jealous, and for Lyra as well, the, the guy that, the boy she likes, uh, to see if this will get him interested in her. And a lot of things go down along the way. I won't say more than that. We can take the spoiler screen off at uh, Spoiler sign off the screen now. But Lara goes through, Lara Jean goes through a lot of different things throughout the course of this book, and she has to become mature really quickly. So my tune and thoughts and feelings on this book changed really quickly, and I got through it um, today, which is fantastic because this is a 420 page book, and I'd probably only read 50 pages yesterday, but that's what I love about Saturdays and Sundays. I have the entire day to read, and I usually do these days because it is my thing. It's my jam. It's my passion to read. So I take the opportunity when I can on the weekend and I finish this book now and I just, yeah, all in all, I liked this book. Do I think it is the best book I've read? No. But did I enjoy myself? Yes. Overall, I absolutely did. And so I'm glad I continued to give the book a chance and I'm looking forward to reading book number uh, two next month. So let's take a look at the next book that I plan to read, which is this book, Tell Me Three Things, by Julie Bobam. This is, I think, a YA contemporary, and it is uh, 328 pages long. Well, the book is, and then there's extra pages at the end, but this book is. So it's significantly shorter. We'll see how things go with that one, and I'll update you all tomorrow. But as far as Tall the Boys I Loved Before, it's either a solid 3.5 or 4 stars from me, still to be determined, and I'll check back in tomorrow with my update about Tell Me Three Things. See you soon.
It is Sunday, the 12th of February at somewhere around 9pm, I think it's like 9.06pm, and so it's time for another update. Okay, let's get Tell Me Three Things by uh, Julie Buxbaum up on the screen, because boy do we need to talk. Okay, first of all, apologies to Julie for calling her Julie Bobum when her name is very much Julia Buxbaum. <laughs> I thought it was a French name, <laughs> so there you go. Um, but let's talk about the book. I remember doing my February TBR and saying, I know nothing about this book. I'm really intrigued to see what I think about the book because I'm going in so completely blind. I have absolutely no idea. And I came out absolutely loving it and gave it five stars. Now, that's not to say that it's not uh, critique free because I do feel that there was one thing that let me down, but let me tell you a very quick premise. So we're following a, it's a YA contemporary. I I feel it's more contemporary than romance. So I'm going to call it a YA contemporary. We're following a high schooler by the name of Jessie. Jessie has lost her mother. Her mother died. Her father, I'm still a bit confused about what the situation was, but her father either found a girlfriend or a wife. I think she's just a girlfriend, but anyway, and the girlfriend lives in LA where Jessie, her father, and her mother, when her mother was alive, lived in Chicago. So Jessie's father decides to uproot Jessie's life and take her with him to LA to live with this new woman and her son in her mansion compared to what they used to have. So Jessie needs to now find a way to acclimate herself to living in LA and going to high school at a new school, which is a private school that the girlfriend uh, and uh, her, her father's girlfriend ends up paying for. And it's just a really weird situation. Everyone seems really snobbish at the school. No one seems to even want to acknowledge her presence except for these really mean girls who seem to just be putting her down and just being really awful but then suddenly out of nowhere Jesse receives an email from this guy um, who is calling himself somebody nobody uh, SN for short who wants to kind of be like her spirit guide or guardian angel while she's there to help her navigate the high school. Jesse decides what the hey let's have a bit of a chat with him and see what happens. And these two characters continue to email throughout the majority of the book. The question becomes, who is this guy? But while that may sound like it's a romance or even a romance mystery, I feel it's more a contemporary because we spend a lot of time with Julie trying to deal with the loss of her mother. And incidentally, she loses the closeness of family because her father, whilst he is still alive, is really not there for her anymore. He seems to kind of discard her for this new woman. Meanwhile, this um, new woman that, yeah, that the father's with has uh, her own child who is a a boy who goes to Jesse's school and he very much abandons her early on and says, you know, no, I got my own life. You go fend for yourself. But what we end up finding out about him makes this make more sense. I don't want to get into that because that is a spoiler that we don't find out until further on the book. But we find out some things about him, uh, as I say, that make it make more sense. But Julie has, sorry, not Julie, Jesse. (laughs) Julie's the author. Jesse goes through a lot of struggles at the school and dealing with the loss of her mother and the loss of communication and family with her father and missing home and things like that. There's a lot of grief and loss that she's processing throughout the book, which is what's leading me to believe it's more of a contemporary. My one complaint, my one complaint, because it is still a five-star read for me, is that we seem to spend far too much time in Julie's head. Now, maybe I should be more forgiving of that because it's a contemporary in my mind as opposed to a romance. If I were calling this a YA romance, I would give it four stars because we spend way too much time in her head. But as a contemporary, I probably should forgive it. So objectively, it's fine, but subjectively, it's just not something that I enjoyed. To give an example that's not of the book so you understand where my annoyance is coming from, 
let's just say that Jessie finds this guy at school that she likes and she asks him if he is single. We then spend two whole paragraphs, if not more, with Jessie in her head about what she thinks about the guy, what she's hoping his answer is going to be, the fact that she is sweating or her hands are shaking or whatever before we get the answer. Now, if this were to occur just once or twice, it would be fine, but it occurs all the time. Jessie will say something or ask something, and then we have to full on, you know, be with her internally in her mind, going through all these different thoughts and feelings she's having before the story can progress. And that did kind of annoy me. But I have to say, the who are you, as far as the whole um, anonymous writing trope thing is concerned when it comes to a romance or a contemporary. I do love that trope when it's done well, and this was done very well. I was intrigued to find out who SN was all the way through the book, and the ending made me very happy. That's not giving away any spoilers, that's just my own thoughts and feelings. The ending made me incredibly happy. But yeah, I absolutely loved it, aside from that one complaint, and even with that one complaint, I'm still giving it five stars. So, the next book I went to pick up was this book, Your Welcome Universe by Whitney Gardner. This book has been shelved and I will tell you why. First of all, if you're new here and you don't know the difference between a DNF and a shelf, I'm more than happy to tell you in my mind. A DNF is a book that you start, you don't finish, and you don't plan to go back to it. A shelf is when you have a book that you either started reading or you haven't started reading, you put it back on your bookshelf and you plan to go back to it at some other point in time. I have shelved Your Welcome Universe by Whitney Gardner because at the moment I'm exclusively looking for audiobooks. I'm working on a number of different crochet blanket projects, and so therefore I'm currently looking to consume my reading through audio listening. And this is going to be the first time in years that I've purchased a book without checking if it was on audiobook, because I always normally do. But yeah, I was really excited to get into this book and then suddenly found I can't find an audiobook anyway, so if you can, please let me know. I struggled for a while to think what the heck I was going to do and thought, oh, I'll just make Mistborn replace um, uh, Your Welcome Universe, but I wanted to read something else while I'm reading Mistborn, and so eventually I settled on this book, Evermore, by Alison Noel. This is a YA paranormal, and it's book one in the Immortal series. Now, this is on my second SAS list, the list of making some good headway in. I have actually read this book before, so I already own it, and so thought I might as well do the reread of this now to start my, officially start uh, my SAS list with this series. Um, long story short, we are following a woman by the name of something that I don't remember, and I'm in another room right now, but anyway, she has psychic abilities, and she doesn't like that she does. That was enough to intrigue me to keep reading the book. I don't want to say too much else at this point, but she has met a guy at high school. It's a YA paranormal. She's met a guy at her high school who's new, and when he's around her, everything else seems to stop. Like, she can um, not only, it's not that she reads the minds of others, but that she hears their thoughts, whether she wants to or not, and it's very overwhelming for her. But whenever he's with her, everything goes quiet, so she wants to know more about this guy. I'm about seven seven chapters in and really enjoying it. Well, this was a long check-in, but my weekend is over. I'm now going to he be heading back to work tomorrow. I'm never ready to head back into work. I mean, I always wish my weekends were longer, but what can you do? I'll do a check-in with you all again tomorrow. Until then, happy reading. <laughs>
Compared to the weekend, I have very minimal time to read. These days, I'm working a 9.30 to 5.30 shift, and by the time I'm done at the end of the day, I am so exhausted. <laughs> Today, I broke a personal record. I work um, in customer service in a call center. Let's put it leave it at that. And today, in the space of seven hours, I took 105 calls. <laughs> I love my stats, and sometimes they show the effort we put in. Um, so I'm just exhausted by the time I'm done. So it really, there's no option for me to read after work because I'm too exhausted to even absorb what I'm reading. And um, that number of 105 for today that is a personal best for me. I've never broken a hundred calls in a day. Um, so I'll celebrate that win, but, uh, usually I'm somewhere between 80 and 95, 96 calls a day, which is just ridiculous for the space of seven hours. Um, so I'm exhausted by the end of the day, which means reading is just not an option. So it really depends on what shift I'm on because I'm on a rotating roster every week my shift can change and the center is open from 8 a.m to 8 30 p.m so it really varies um a couple of weeks ago I did a 12 30 to 8 30 12 30 p.m to 8 30 p.m shift and this week I'm doing 9 30 to 5 30 which is mainly what I did last week too what works with this is if I get up early enough, I can have about an hour or at maximum two to read in the morning before work, which I appreciate. But on the weekend, I'm obviously reading a whole lot more because I'm not working. I find it, I just want to make a point of this here because it's something I think about during the week, but since I don't really check in a lot during the week, I don't get a lot of time to mention this. So forgive me, but it's a thought that definitely relates to reading. How do you all feel uh, when you read during the week, if you're working during the week? And, you know, working can be absolutely anything. It can be paid or unpaid employment. Um, anything that you're doing, even if your sole job is to be a booktube creator and you're not making money, or if you are you know, looking after your family, cleaning your home or whatever it is, you know, how do you feel during the week compared to or during those times when you're really busy and you only have a couple of hours to read versus when you have a whole lot more time to read. For me, it's really tough reading during the week weekend because when I'm only reading for a couple of hours, a book that's really short can take me forever to get through. And by the time I get to the end, I find it a lot harder to remember the finer details of what I've read uh, at the beginning or even, you know, in the first third of the book. So I'm kind of struggling with that. So let's put Evermore up on the screen. First book in the Immortal series by Alison Noel. That's what I'm currently reading at the moment. My initial goal was to finish this tomorrow, but it's just not going to happen. Um, so I'm hoping I'll have it finished by Thursday. And at the moment, I can honestly say I'm enjoying what I'm reading when I'm reading it, but I can also say that I don't feel like I'm retaining a lot um, because of how the how limited my reading is for every day and when it is in the morning. So it's been a bit of a struggle bus for me at the moment for the past couple of days. But um, what can I say? We, I don't even remember the protagonist's name and I don't have the book on me, but we're following our protagonist who is a psychic that doesn't want to be a psychic. So a long time ago, her parents and her sister died and she's the only one in the four person family who survived. Her aunt took her in. Unlike a lot of other tropes I've seen, her aunt actually loves her a lot, which I appreciate because I've seen a whole lot of, you know, other family members taking in protagonists and they don't like them. But um, this, her aunt has a lot of love for her and she sees, she knows she's psychic because she, it's not that she reads people's minds. It's more that she feels the she receives the thoughts that others have unwillingly. She doesn't want them. She just hears them anyway. And her sister comes to her one day and she then obviously knows she can see her sister and other things that are happening. But what I love about this book so much compared to any other paranormal book that I've read, because it's to me this is a paranormal series, is that our character, who I think her name is Eva, 
but I'll confirm that for you tomorrow. She does not want this ability. She just wants to get it off her. <laughs> like She's like, I don't want this. I don't want to deal with this. And whilst I have dealt with the I wish this wasn't thrust upon me trope before, I haven't dealt with that in a fantasy world where what you don't want is the abilities that you have. And it's really interesting watching her navigate something that she does not want. Now, it's a YA paranormal. Something I'm getting so used to is YA romance. And the reason that you heard me say so used to the way I just did is because I've read so many YAs this month. Oh my goodness. I think I came in to this month having read one, maybe two, maximum YA so far this year. And so far in February, all I've read is YA. And so one thing that I'm kind of getting over is every single YA has to have a romance and I'm kind of done with it. Please give me a YA book that does not feature a romance, that does not have our protagonist interested in anyone (laughs) in that way. She can have friends or he can have friends, but please no more romance. I'm so done with it. And it's not to say that I don't enjoy romance. I do. It's just, I love mixing up my books that I read. But the thing is, it really doesn't matter what type of YA genre I'm reading. They all have to feature a romance for some reason, and I'm kind of over it. (laughs) Oh, and that's me putting it politely because hmm, I have words. (laughs) I mean, what? Does every single YA author have to sign some clause in their contract that says, I promise I will feature a romance and it will be featured heavily enough in no matter what genre I'm writing, whether it be fantasy or sci-fi or thriller or horror or whatever it is. If it's a YA, it must feature a romance. Uh, well, okay, so I am, I think at last glance, and so I don't have the book on me, but I think, because uh, it's in another room and I have people sleeping down there, so I don't want to wake them up, um, but I think I'm on chapter 14, and I think there's 39 chapters in the book, so I'm close on halfway, but not exactly halfway yet. So there you go, that was a whole lot of rambling, hope you enjoyed it, I'll see you again tomorrow for another update. <laughs> Happy reading. It is Friday, and uh, it is, sorry, no, it's not, no, it is Saturday, I apologize, Sunday the 18th of February at 2.38pm in the afternoon, and I do realize that I did not check in with you on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and I'm going to start changing up how I do my reading vlogs moving forward, because I was recently re-watching a reading vlog that I did in 2020, where I said this, and I thought to myself, you know what, past Mr. Francie, you are so right, I am so doing this from now on because it makes so much more sense. Okay, so I am going to wrap up this entire week for you, including um, my uh, update for Evermore and just wrapping everything else up that I've read this week. But moving forward after this vlog, I'm going to check in twice a week with you guys. I'm going to check in with you on... um, I'm going to check in with you on Sunday nights and to wrap up what I, what happened over the course of the weekend. And then I'm going to check in with you guys on Friday nights to, uh, to wrap up with you of what I've gone through, what I've read and all that stuff for during the week. So the reason for this is because as you heard with my, I don't want to call it depressing, but, you know, with my more exhausted tone because I was so exhausted at work, I'm sure you can tell I'm a lot more bright and bubbly today because it's Saturday, (laughs) that, yeah, I don't have a lot of time to read during the week and it was really bumming me out and I really didn't have a lot of time to read uh, at all between um, Wednesday and Friday. So yeah, didn't really have a lot to say there either. But yeah, what I'm going to do from now on is just continue to do what I normally do, which is to take advantage of my weekends, read as much as I can on the weekends, not forcing myself to. It's more because I have that time. I will um, enjoy it as much as I can, enjoy the weekend to the fullest by reading as much as I can, because that's what I want to do. And I don't have that opportunity during the week. And then um what I'll do during the week is I'll just take things a little more easy and read what I can when I can and give that update on Fridays. All right, so let's jump in. I have finished Evermore by Alison Noel, book number one, the the Immortal series. You guys, I remembered giving this book five stars when I first read it because I saw that on Goodreads when I was, when I updated the status to say that I was rereading it now. But now I remember why 
The ending is so good that it's making me want to jump right into Blue Moon book number two, but I'm not going to do that. I, For those of you who are interested in my progress with the Immortal series, I'm going to pick up Blue Moon in May. This is because I have filled out every single month up until the first half of December of this year already with all my TBRs. They're already ready to go. I've never done that before, but I have this year. And I just couldn't find a book to take out or swap around. Uh, earlier on uh, in the year than May. So in May, I will read book number two. I have placed that in there. So that is good. At least that's ready to go. But yeah, I love this book. I had so much fun with it. Ultimately, yes, there is a romance. Yes, I am continuing to get annoyed with how many romances have to feature in YA. So I'm sorry you had to listen to that. But it's true. When all I'm reading is YA, 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 and regardless of that YA genre, there's a romance included, it can just be annoying. And when you have someone as transparent as me reporting back to you in my reading vlogs how I'm feeling in that moment and continuing to be transparent, you're going to have me saying, yeah, I'm getting sick of all these romances in YA. But anyway, it is what it is. Ultimately, I did love this book and the way that it ended was so powerful, it was so freaking good, that I need to read book two now, but I will force myself to hold off until May. Five stars for this book. I do highly recommend it. If you love paranormal books, then I recommend this book. I haven't read the rest of the series, so I recommend this book on its own. Um, if you... Uh, intrigued in the premise where we follow someone who does have magical abilities but doesn't want them and wishes they would just get the heck off her read this book <laughs> because that's we definitely have a character like that who doesn't want these abilities <laughs> but yeah it is it is a really good book and ever goes through and um, Eva is the protagonist's name um hence why it's called ever more book one ever goes through <clears throat> excuse me an amazing character arc in this book that is just so wonderful i love her i love her friend riley riley's a crack up i hope we have more of riley in the series and her love interest who um there is more to him than meets the eye that we learn more about as we go along in the series. His name is Damon. I love Damon too. Yeah, great book. Highly recommend it. Um, especially if you like books with a darker tone in YA, then I recommend this too because it just, it doesn't have a full on gothic approach, but it seems to have a little bit of a gothy tone, if that makes sense. All right. So five stars for this one. And that's kind of where I'm up to. All right, so my update with Mistborn is that I, with the Final Empire, I haven't gotten any further because I just haven't had time. So I am currently on page 76 out of, it's a very long book, out of 600 and 660 pages. So yeah, a long way to go with this one. But you know what? If I don't finish the Final Empire by the end of Gen uh, February, I don't even know what month we're in anymore. If I don't finish this book by the end of February, I am more than happy to carry it on over into March. That is fine. And then start Well of Ascension after it and read this book and Well of Ascension alongside the other books that I already had on my TBR. So that is my update for that. Um... Okay, let's take a look at what my goal is for next week, because I do have some goals. Who knows um, how much I'll be able to stick to those goals, but we'll have a look anyway, because, you know, we might as well. <laughs> okay, if you would like to see me updating my goals on a daily basis, please do feel free to come on over and join us on the Discord. I have a reading slash bookish goals section where um, everyone has their own name channel under that section on the discord and we can all put in our goals that we have and for me i'm updating weekly goals at the moment so here are my goals at the moment so uh today and tomorrow i plan to start and finish this book decaffeinated corpse by cleo coil this is book number i believe it's book number five yeah in the coffee house mystery series then um oh sorry no, that is correct. Then tomorrow I also want to, um, I want to have this book finished, but I also want to start French Pressed, which is book number six in the Coffee House Mystery Series, which I think at this stage is going to be the last Coffee House book that I read this year because I've read a number of them already. And so that will be good enough to carry the, ser the, the series over to next year. Um, but yeah, that's my goal. And I will read French Pressed. The plan anyway is to start it tomorrow and finish it on Tuesday, 
because of how little time I have on Monday and, and Tuesday to read. And then I plan to re-pick up The Final Empire and continue on with that and get as far as I can all the way up until Saturday when I'll pick up my next book on my TBR, which is this book, Amina's Voice by, oh goodness, I've forgotten her name, by Hannah Khan. So that's the second last book that I plan to read. And then we are going to be so close to the end of the month because by that point there'll only be like three more days to go. So yeah, I plan to read, uh, to start Amina's Voice on Sunday the 25th, probably finish it on Sunday the 26th. And then on Monday the 27th and Tuesday the 28th, I plan to read The Magician's Nephew for the Chronicles of Narnia buddy read that we have going. Um, So yeah, that's kind of the goal at the moment. So therefore, wrapping up this week, I read To All the Boys I Loved Before uh, by Jenny Hahn, book number one in the To All the Boys I Loved Before series. It is a YA romance that I gave this book four stars. Tell Me Three Things by Julie Buxma. This is a YA contemporary, and I gave this book five stars. And Evermore uh, by Alison Noel, book number one, the Immortals series, and I, uh, which is a uh, YA paranormal, and I gave this book five stars. And next week I plan to continue on with Miss Moore and the Final Empire, and to start and continue on with Decaffeinated Corpse, as well as French Press, as well as Amina's Voice. I hope you enjoyed the very, very, very much mismanaged um, reading vlog that was <laughs> for this week. If you've made it this far, thank you so much. If you have, please leave a book emoji in the comments so I know that you made it this far and you trusted that I would end things well and on a sparkly high in a sparkly and high manner so <laughs> thank you I appreciate that you've made it to the end of the video thank you so much because I know I got a bit dark there towards the middle <laughs> but next week I will be um do it my reading vlog will have me check in twice on Sunday night so starting tomorrow night I'll do my first check-in for that vlog and then I'll do my second check-in on Friday so I'll do a wrap-up of the weekend and a wrap-up of the week and you'll get that in next week's reading vlog okay that is where I am going to leave it Lynn you'll go with peace blessings and so 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 much love please do be kind and love one another and spread your sparkling energy all throughout the world and let me know what books you're planning on reading this week and what you're looking forward to reading for the remainder of this month but in the meantime have Happy reading. Bye, everyone.